Hi, in this video we will learn all the basics of CSS. But what is CSS you might wonder? CSS is the styling language of the web. And it looks like that. Cool, right? But what does CSS stand for? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And as I've said before, it is the styling language of the web. A styling language can be used to change the visual appearance of websites. For example, you could use CSS to change the color of your texts. CSS works together with HTML. HTML is used to define the basic layout of websites, whereas CSS is used to change every little detail about how your website looks and feels. And just as HTML, CSS can be displayed in the browser. Have a look at this comparison. It shows the same Wikipedia article twice. To the left, CSS is enabled and to the right, it is disabled. Do you see how ugly and messy the website looks with CSS disabled? I wanted to show you this comparison because I wanted to make clear how important CSS is to create beautiful websites. Next, we're going to learn how to add CSS to your websites. There are three different ways of how to add CSS to websites. The first one we're going to learn is inline CSS. With inline CSS, we write CSS code directly in the HTML by setting the style attribute of an HTML element. Here, we want to create a blue text, so we write the CSS rule color blue. Let's create another text paragraph, but this time we want to set the color to green. So we use the style attribute of the second text paragraph and add the CSS rule color green. Internal CSS is the second way of how to add CSS to a website. Let's first create two HTML elements, one h1 element and one paragraph element. To access the h1 element from the CSS code, we are going to set an ID. Let's set it to post title. IDs are unique identifiers and they only occur one time per page. There will be only one post title, so we are going to use an ID here. A post can have multiple post paragraphs, so we are going to set a class to the paragraph element. Classes are identifiers which can be used for multiple elements across the page. Now we have prepared the HTML and we are ready to add the internal CSS to the page. Internal CSS can be added to a web page by using the style tag. Basically you can add the style tag anywhere on the page but most of the times it's added to the head of the page. Within the style element, you create the CSS rules. To select an ID in a CSS rule, you have to use the hash character, followed by the name of the ID. And to select elements by its class in CSS, you have to use a dot followed by the name of the class. Okay, now we will have a look at external CSS. Other than for internal and inline CSS, where we write the CSS code in the HTML file, external CSS uses external CSS files. And to enable the CSS rules defined in an external file, we have to link it in the head of the HTML page. The linked file style.css have to be created, so let's do that. And let's add the same CSS rules for post title and post paragraph like in the inline CSS example. Okay, enough of the theory. Let's write a little bit CSS code now. I have prepared a simple HTML file, which hasn't any HTML elements yet. So let's create some. Let's first create an h1 element, which we are going to style with CSS in the next step. The heading will be CSS basics, and we want to make the text a little bit smaller by using CSS. So we will use the style attribute to set the font size to 20 pixels. And as you can see in the browser to the right, the heading will be displayed a little bit smaller than before. And if we set the font size to 50 pixels, the heading will appear very, very large. Next, we want to create a text paragraph, which has centered text. And in addition, its text should be bold. So first we are going to add the CSS code to center align the text. We achieve that by using text align center. As you can see in the browser, the text is centered. And to make the text bold, we add another CSS rule to the style attribute. Font weight bold. 
and have another look at the browser, we will see the text is centered and bold, just as we wanted it. Okay, let's remove all the inline CSS now, because we want to have a closer look at internal CSS. Remember, to add internal CSS to a web page, we have to use the style element. So let's add one to the head of the page. We can also use CSS selectors to target specific HTML elements, even if they don't have any ID or class associated. We can just use the name of the tag we want to style, like h1, as a CSS selector. Let's do that. And let's create a very huge heading by setting the font size to 60 pixels. As you can see in the browser, we have just created a very, very large heading. We want to center the paragraph text again. So let's add a CSS rule to the P tag text align center. So let's add the font weight property and set it to bold like before. So now we have achieved the same appearance like we have just done before when we used inline CSS. Classes are a very important concept when using CSS because they allow us to reuse CSS stylings for different elements. Like for example, we want to have a red text multiple times on our page. We only have to create the CSS rule a single time and we are then able to reuse the CSS definitions by assigning the specific class to the HTML element we want to apply the styles to. So let's assign the CSS class red text to both of the paragraphs. And as you can see in the browser, both texts will appear in red color. Now let's add two more CSS definitions for large and for small text and setting the font size respectively. Large text should be a very large font size, let's say 25 pixels. And the CSS definition for the small text class should set the font size very small, let's say like 12 pixels. And now we can assign the classes to our HTML elements. Let's first change the red text class of the one paragraph to green text and add an additional class large text. And as you can see in the browser, the text is large and green at the same time. We want to make the red text small, so let's assign the small text class to the text paragraph. And as you can see, the red text appears very small. The last thing we want to do is changing the size of our heading. So let's first set it to small text. And of course, that's a little bit too small for a heading. So let's change it to large text. It's still a little bit too small if you ask me. So let us create another CSS definition, extra large text, which has a font size of 60 pixels and assign it to our heading to make it extra large. Have a look at the browser preview and you will see the heading is extra large. Okay, so we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it and learned a lot. If you like this series so far, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any content about learning to code. So happy coding and see you next time.